Okay, so this is the next Logisim tutorial, and today we're going to be looking at splitters and clocks. First of all, we're going to be doing clocks. So a clock is a input device that is always ticking from one side to another, like a clock. It never stops. So clocks can uh, be very useful, especially when you want it to, to update every once every certain amount of time. Although we can use it for our AND gates. We hook the clock up there and hook up uh, another input, uh, a pin here, connect that to there and we'll have our LED here. So the clock won't be moving at first, although you, with the finger you can poke it, turn on and off, although we want, uh, we want it to pulse. So we can could control T and or simulate tick once, which tick once. But we ticks enabled, which is control K, means that it will continue ticking. And tick frequency is how fast. So we enable ticking. This is at one hertz. So it's quite slow, but we can uh, bump it up to 64 hertz when it's very fast. And if we turn this one on, the light will probably break in real life, but this is a simulation so it won't. We can just do control K and it will stop ticking. So that's a clock. Next is the splitter. A splitter can... is basically like many different wires in one. It turns out to be a black looking wire. So first of all, you get different appearances. So you can have a right hand, which is facing right, centered, and legacy. Today we're going to be using centered, and we're going to fan out, which is how many different prongs of the fork of the fork we're going to have. We're going to use four, and bit width, bit width then is going to be four. It's best to keep them the same. So we're going to need some inputs. So one, two, three, four. A cool feature is if you highlight them all you can change it for all of them so we can say direction west so the pin is going to be going in the westly direction so if we hook them up to these different pins okay so now all of these bits are going to be compacted into this one so each one of these is a bit a bit is on and off, or on or off so we have four bits so we have a four bit number coming through here and what we can do with this four bit number is output it to a hexadecimal display. Hexadecimal display is just a display that can show it us in hexadecimal, which is basically one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, no, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A, B, C, D, E, F. So it's sixteen uh, digits in hexadecimal. So this one here, I, yeah. So this is uh, seven signals, uh, uh, dis, uh, hexadec hexadecimal display, and we have three bits. So let's go. So if we turn this one on, it'll be eight because this is the greatest bits uh, signified by the three. So because that's the biggest number in that order. So this is going to be eight. Because each one is basically times two of the previous bit. So the first one's one, the next one's two, the next one's four, the next one's eight. The biggest number we can really create is F, which is 16. When you think about it, uh, the one, the two, the four, and the eight would make F. Even though it doesn't, but it does. Because that's 15 and zero doesn't really count as a number, because that's none of them. So it does make 16. So you can make any number with this, any number up to 16. So this is basically a 4-bit machine. We can pick our bits, but this is not very, it's not very useful. We want it to add. So next episode, we're going to be doing an adding machine. Bye.